Hello YouTube and welcome to Resonance Arcade. I'm Chris and today I'm going to be doing a review of Fallout Shelter, a mobile game made by Bethesda Game Studios with help from Behaviour Interactive, who are a lesser known studio that normally focuses on ports, mobile games, as well as mini games and specific contracted functionality inside larger titles such as uh, for Far Cry 3 for example. Uh, they've worked with Bethesda on a number of titles from Wolfenstein The New Order to the very recently released Fallout 4. Fallout Shelter was released on iOS on the 14th of June 2015 and then on Android on the 13th of August 2015. I'm playing the Android version on my Galaxy Nexus 10 Android 5.1.1 for those of you who care. If you were cynical, you could say that it's been created as a clever, ongoing advertisement for Fallout 4, and you'd probably be right. It's a trend that's been growing in popularity in recent years uh, for game studios that have the budget to do it right. Let's say it's the new viral marketing. In the game, you play the role of a Vault Overseer. To the uninitiated among you, a Vault Overseer is the boss or a leader of a Vault, and a Vault is a kind of nuclear fallout shelter run by the evil Vault tech in Fallout's alternate histories, 1950s America setting. Each Fallout game sees a player take the role of either a Vault Dweller venturing into the irradiated wasteland, or some kind of wasteland survivor or settler with some kind of single objective. This gives Fallout Shelter uh, a unique setting in the Fallout universe. Overseers are referred to often while playing the canon games. You sometimes read their diaries or even interact with one occasionally, but this is the first time, to my recollection at least, that you've been able to play as one. I haven't played all of the Fallout games, but I have played Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 now. At its heart, Fallout Shelter is a vault simulation game. At its worst, it's another pointless, time-wasting, tap-to-advance mobile game, but I'd like to give it a little bit more credit than that. I've played, and subsequently gotten quite addicted to, my fair share of pointless mobile games, all of which are constantly trying to bait you into spending unfathomable amounts of money, uh, on re real money, on what is essentially very weak and time-filling gameplay. One thing that I like about Fallout Shelter is that even though I've been playing it almost every day for around a week, I've not once been asked to spend any money, nor have I accidentally clicked on something in the uh, in the interface uh, that, that would spend gems, simoleons, uh, or anything that resembles real cash. There is a shop with the option to buy caps, or bottle caps, uh, which is the Fallout Universe's currency, but I've not once felt compelled or mithered by the game into spending real money. The fact that humankind have already spent a whopping $5.1 million on Fallout Shelter proves that there is an addictive nature to it, and that some people will always spend money on casual games that don't really offer that much gameplay, but it's nice to know that you can still experience all of the gameplay in Fallout Shelter without actually spending any money. So, let's take a look at the gameplay. The game has undergone a number of changes since release, but at the time of this review you essentially managed three resources. Food, power, and water. Each of your resources has a maximum storage limit, and a minimum amount that should be held in storage at any time. If you drop below this limit, the relevant resource bar turns red, and your vault dwellers subsequently suffer in one way or another. For example, if your water is too low, your dwellers start becoming irradiated, which lowers their available health. If the power drops too low, rooms in your vault start shutting down, rendering those rooms uh, and their resources and the bonuses unavailable. And finally, if your, if your food drops below the acceptable level, your dwellers start to lose health in general. This, along with the careful placement of dwellers in your vault, is the main resource management aspect of the game. Resources are gained by placing dwellers in certain rooms, such as power generators, canteens and water plants, and then waiting around until the timer passes. You can instantly rush rooms, so as long as, so as, long as you're willing to take the risk of a disaster occurring, such as a fire, or a mole rat or rad roach infestation. Or you can reduce the timer by placing dwellers with the relevant attributes into specific rooms, or by upgrading or expanding the rooms. Each dweller has a health bar, a happiness skill, a level, clothing and weapon slots, and a set of familiar special attributes. That stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Clothing boosts certain attributes, and placing dwellers in certain rooms will permanently boost their attributes after a certain time. These are special training rooms such as gyms and classrooms. 
Dwellers arrive at your vault in a few different ways. To get you started, a few turn up at the vault door. As the game progresses, you have to attract them via a radio room or by moving a compatible male and female dweller into the living quarters. Babies are born within a few hours and then the kids grow up after a few more hours. To build up your clothing and weapon stocks, you have to send your dwellers out into the wasteland. Although this is also a timer-based minigame, your success depends on the dweller's stats, how many stim packs and radaways you send them with, how well they're equipped, and how long you send them out for. You also get a little story for each of their trips. It's procedurally generated and ends up being a little bit repetitive, but you can easily tell how good or bad a dweller is doing by reading the last few pages each time you check on their progress. Dwellers can die out in the wasteland, they can also die inside your vault. To revive them, all you need to do is spend a few caps, uh, up to, so far, for me it's been up to 500 caps to regenerate them. And there's no other detriment to it, it doesn't cost you real money, it does get more expensive the more advanced the dweller is, but that's the limit of the expenditure. So far I've managed a six hour trip, that's in real world hours as well, before any of my dwellers have run out of health, died, or I've had to recall them. Uh, the longer they're out, the harder the enemies are, but the better loot that they get. Once you recall the dweller, it takes them half as long to get back to your vault. So, if they've been out for six hours, it takes them three hours to return. This is in real time, you don't have to have the game running while this is happening, uh, but everything else tends, well most of the things in the game tend to pause while you're not playing. This means that you need to plan for absent dwellers in your vault and make sure that you've got enough to cover while they're missing and while they're out in the wasteland. There are a few events that can randomly occur. Raiders occasionally attack your vault, stealing your resources, but often dropping caps and clothing or weapons when they're killed. And apparently every time you broadcast a radio signal, which is every few hours depending on how far you've upgraded your radio room, or every time you open your vault door to let someone in or out, a death claw attack can occur. Although I've not, I've not actually seen that yet, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to get away with that at the moment. Lastly, you may occasionally hear a dissonant guitar chord as the mysterious stranger appears somewhere in your vault. As the vault grows, it becomes quite hard to find him, but it offers quite a nice little Where's Wally, or Where's Waldo, if you're not from the UK, uh, minigame, and rewards you with a decent amount of caps if you catch him in time. He's only available for a few seconds, so you have to be very, very quick. Some reviewers have criticised the lack of depth in Fallout Shelter, but I've got to disagree. For a casual game, it ties in with the Fallout universe, at least Bethesda's version of it, very well, and to me it offers a good amount of content considering it's free to play. If you're a fan of resource management and you're looking for your next casual game, I would highly, highly recommend it. So, thank you very much for watching this review of Fallout Shelter. If you have anything to say, please comment below and subscribe to our channel for any future reviews, co-op let's plays and other gaming related bits and bobs that we do. We do a live interactive games podcast on Wednesday nights at 7.30pm via Twitch, so if that kind of thing floats your boat, come along and join the chat on www.twitch.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade. See you later!